Vincent Malloy is seven years old. He's always polite and does what he's told. For a boy his age, he's considerate and nice. But he wants to be just like Vincent Price. He doesn't mind living with his sister, dog, and cats. Though he'd rather share a home with spiders and bats. There he could reflect on the horrors he's invented. And wander dark hallways alone and torment. Vincent is nice when his aunt comes to see him, but imagines dipping her in wax for his wax museum. He likes to experiment on his dog, Abercrombie, in the hopes of creating a horrible zombie. So he and his horrible zombie dog could go searching for victims in the London fog. His thoughts, though, aren't only of ghoulish crime. He likes to paint and read to pass some of the time. While other kids read books like Go, Jane, Go, Vincent's favorite author is Edgar Allan Poe. One night, while reading a gruesome tale, he read a passage that made him turn pale. Such horrible news he could not survive, for his beautiful wife had been buried alive. He dug out her grave to make sure she was dead, unaware that her grave was his mother's flower bed. His mother sent Vincent off to his room, he knew he'd been banished to the Tower of Doom, where he was sentenced to spend the rest of his life alone with the portrait of his beautiful wife. While alone and insane, encased in his doom, Vincent's mother burst suddenly into the room. She said, if you want to, you can go out and play. It's sunny outside and a beautiful day. Vincent tried to talk, but he just couldn't speak. The years of isolation had made him quite weak. So he took out some paper and scrawled with a pen, I am possessed by this house and can never leave it again. His mother said, you're not possessed and you're not almost dead. These games that you play are all in your head. You're not Vincent Price, you're Vincent Malloy. You're not tormented or insane, you're just a young boy. You're seven years old and you are my son. I want you to get outside and have some real fun. Her anger now spent, she walked out through the hall. And while Vincent backed slowly against the wall, the room started to sway, to shiver and creak. His horrid insanity had reached its peak. He saw Abercrombie, his zombie slave, and heard his wife call from beyond the grave. She spoke from her coffin and made ghoulish demands, while through cracking walls reached skeleton hands. Every horror in his life that had crept through his dreams swept his mad laughter to terrified screams. To escape the madness, he reached for the door but fell limp and lifeless down on the floor. His voice was soft and very slow as he quoted the raven from Edgar Allan Poe. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.
was looking for those pot holders. They went to a good cause. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> That's right, Sparky. You're the star. Oh, Victor, you're in the movie. My son is another Hitchcock. Who? He's that fat guy on TV. Oh, no! <laughs> this is great! Get another one? I don't know. I need to get a Pekingese. They're so cute. My parents said I could do whatever I want. Well, they sound very mature. I don't know if I can find another one like Sparky. We got fish. They got no personality. You get used from dying. And so that class is what is meant by the old adage: Rome wasn't built in a day. All right, class, if we can turn to our science books, we'll pick up where we left off yesterday. If we could go on. Now, let me show you what I mean about electricity and the central nervous system. I'm glad we all have scientific minds. Now, class, this X-frog cannot move because it is, in fact, an X-frog. But let's see what happens when we introduce 
electricity into his system. Now, of course, with a greater amount of electricity, we could make the frog move even more. Any questions? Seems pretty obvious. Hold on. Hi. Hi. Victor, you okay? Fine, Ma. Just great. I got the day off. I'm making your favorite for dinner. Roast beef? I thought your favorite was chicken. Chicken's just great, Ma. Excuse me. Hi. Victor? Yeah, he seems to be taking it fairly well. Got much homework tonight? Just some science in a chapter, Huckleberry Finn. Find what you wanted? Yep. I hope it wasn't cake. Nope. I'm helping my dad clean out the garage. What about bringing it back into the house? I'm just doing what he wants. into a ten-foot mouse. I just want to say good night. Come in. We want you to know we're proud of how you're getting along. I think I'll be just fine. I'm ten years old already. Well, then you should be able to read right side up. Go back to your science fiction. We won't tell anybody. Right down the hall. First right past the closet.
you ever figure out what this thing is supposed to be? I think it's either a piece of fine art or a paperweight. I don't even remember who gave it to us. My sister gave it to us. Well, well then it must be a paperweight. Mm. I don't feel so good. Hmm. He's not warm. Maybe it was the chicken. Hey, you want some juice, champ? Maybe he's got the flu or something. Yeah, the flu or something. Or maybe you just don't feel like going to school. No, no, it's flu or something. We know you're sad, buddy, but you got to go to school. I can't go. I don't want to affect the whole school. Oh, very noble. Here's your lunch. Now get a move on. Bye. 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 working hard enough.
I'm tired. Hey! I've got to talk to you about that dog. You know Sparky was hit. We don't have a dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, look, I don't mind if you've got a new dog, but you can't let him run around scaring half the neighborhood. But we didn't get another dog. I saw a monster. Look, would it make you feel better if I went in and checked for you? Yeah. <laughs> Honey, maybe you just imagined it. I didn't imagine what I saw. And Rose didn't either. Sparky, you know you're not supposed to go out. You could have gotten into trouble. I'm sure there's a very logical explanation for all this. Well? There was no dog. It was, it was probably an alley cat or something. That's right. Probably an alley cat. All right, all right. But if I see it again, I'll be back. What? It was a cat! Look, uh, could, could we talk later, okay? I know what I saw. Shh. Honey, really, sometimes we get frightened. If you'll excuse us. Victor! <laughs> it's only Sparky. What do you mean, only Sparky? I explained everything to you. Honey, I know you explained it. We just don't understand We're it. trying to be reasonable, son. Don't you understand the implications of this thing? I... I just don't know what this means. It means you don't have to go through house breaking another dog. <sighs> Guess not. Your mother and I are trying to make some sense of this. You know you haven't petted him yet? See, he still loves you. Other parents worry about their kids getting into drugs. I guess we're lucky. I bet he has the best science project this year. I have no idea what to do. They didn't cover this in your Lamaze class. Sparky seems friendly enough. I guess we can't punish Victor for bringing Sparky back from the dead. Okay, Victor. I guess Sparky can stay down here. But we've got to keep all the blinds closed. He should go out. No, 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 no. We're going to walk him at night when it's very, very dark. Now, come on. We both better get to work. And don't worry about Sparky. I'll fix him a nice bowl of batteries. Or something. heard they have a lion in there. I saw it. It's worse and bigger. People are weird. They just don't understand. But Sparky's not scary. I know, if they just met him. Hey, Victor, let's introduce everybody to Sparky tonight. Oh, Dad, not yet. The longer we wait, the worse it'll be. Trust me, we'll have everybody over and, and, and we'll let them meet Sparky. I don't know. Go on. Bye. Bye. It's the only way to handle this, kiddo. Try to have a good day. Hiya. Hi. Victor, man, you wouldn't believe
believe the stuff I've been hearing about you. We've got plenty of dip. There. I think this is going to be just fine. Maybe we should do it some other time. It's too late for that, Victor. Come on, hon, let's go. Come on, Sparky. So it really is just the same old Sparky that we all knew and loved. Ah. That's it! It crashed! <laughs>
Ready? Start your engines. This is it. Love at first sight. 